Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, and in this video, I want to do uh, kind of a part two of a video I did a while back on my channel, uh, and that was about using X11 apps in WSL. Well, in this video, we're going to do more X11 apps in WSL. In that video, I did just a quick demo of uh, proving that you could run X11 apps using Windows Subsystem for Linux, and I used the very simple uh, X Clock app, uh, and we'll build on that in this video. I actually got a question on that video about y using um, more complicated apps. Uh, I think IntelliJ and Eclipse were, were thrown out. Um, well, I, I don't have IntelliJ, uh, but I, I can use Eclipse. Eclipse is actually uh, packaged in the Ubuntu uh, repository and also uh, NetBeans which is an IDE I've used extensively is also packaged in the Ubuntu uh, package repositories so I'm going to try to use both of those IDEs and I haven't tried this I haven't even installed them on um, this the, my Windows subsystem for Linux uh, images uh, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen we're going to find out together so let's switch over to the demo. So you'll notice I have two tabs open. That's actually because uh, since that last video, I've actually started playing around with Windows Subsystem for Linux 2. It may not have actually been fully released uh, back when I made that video, uh, but now it has been. So this is a VM or a, a system running in WSL 1, and this is the one that I've been using for. Uh, basically since I got this computer. And this one is Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 uh, and the main difference is that Windows Subsystem for Linux 2 is using an actual Linux kernel so behind the scenes it's running an actual VM uh, that you don't have to manage, you don't have to pay attention to it fires up super quickly uh, lots of pretty cool features uh, that they built into that um, but the the theory and kind of what I want to test out is uh, does that make it a little bit more stable when you're working with apps that really 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 want to be running on Linux now NetBeans and Eclipse are both cross-platform IDEs uh, but I don't know to what degree it's the same executables running on all the platforms I don't know if there's a kind of a, a base that's unique between uh, each platform and then you know, 90% of it is is the same on all platforms, or if it's you know, in the case of a you know, Eclipse is mostly Java, so maybe that is you know, 99% is the same code and it's just you know, the Java runtime. So actually, let's let's check that. So I, I know I have Java installed on the WSL one. I'm not sure if I have it installed on the WSL2 environment yet. Doesn't look like it is. So while I talk about some other things, let's go ahead and um, get that get that get get that going. So apt install open JDK we'll do uh, eleven just to be consistent. Let's see if that does does something. Nope. Let's do that. 1108 is probably the right version. Yeah, same version as I have over here. Okay, so now the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, the X server. So let's show the value of my display variable. It's basically localhost colon 0.0. .0. Um, if we go over to my MOBAX term, you can see display is set to, that's my IP address, that's my local machine's IP address, colon 0.0. .0. So I'm using the X server from MOBAX term. I'm just not using MOBAX term because uh, over here, this is actually the Windows terminal, the, the brand new, well, I guess it's been out for several months, but Windows Terminal. It's actually a pretty cool piece of software. Uh, I haven't done a video on that, but uh, people like Scott Hanselman have done a ton of videos on that. So go ahead and check out his videos. 
uh, on Windows Terminal. So just to prove that that works, we'll run X clock, and there we go. It fires right up. And over here, uh, when that's done, I'll fire up X clock as well and prove that it's it's working over there. So the next thing we need to do is install uh, the pieces of software we're going to test out. So let's do sudo apt install. We're doing Eclipse and NetBeans. It would help if I spelled sudo correctly. Sudo. And we'll get quite a bit of libraries, uh, quite a bit of packages installed. Um, I will definitely be going through and purging and auto-removing all of this uh, to save a disk space because uh, this is not part of my workflow. I don't I don't do this as a, you know for my development. Uh, I do uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux and Visual Studio Code most of the time. Um, I actually have a video on doing that for PHP. I'll leave that linked in the description below. Uh, it's one of the more popular videos on my channel, so go ahead and check that out and give it a like if uh, if, if if that's something that that seems pretty cool to you. So. We're getting pretty close to being done installing Java over here. So one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this sort of thing, uh, and kind of the discussion that was happening on the other video, was uh, to what degree is this an actual uh, good representation of what's going on in Linux? Uh, so in the case of WSL2, it is a real Linux kernel. So it's probably a lot closer um, than with WSL1. I did notice that uh, Snap which is uh, something the Ubuntu has added for the last several releases, um, isn't set up in WSL. So there is actually a NetBeans snap, uh, but I couldn't use the NetBeans snap here uh, because Snappy just isn't set up. So there are definitely differences between WSL, even WSL2, and a real Linux system. So if you're doing like true uh, testing, definitely go with an actual Linux system for your, your final testing. But this, I think, is a very trustworthy development environment that you can have a lot of confidence in. So now that that's done installing, let's go ahead and run xclock. Sure enough, there's xclock running. And let's, uh, let's install Eclipse and NetBeans. Looks like we can't install Eclipse there, so let's just install NetBeans. So it says there's 13 minutes remaining. If there's actually 13 minutes remaining, I'll just chop this section out of the video, and we'll skip straight to actually running Eclipse and NetBeans. All right, and we're back. Uh, that took quite a bit longer than I expected, so I cut out a whole bunch from the video. Uh, but our WSL2 instance is actually almost done installing. Uh, in just a minute, it'll drop me back to the prompt. Our WSL1 instance uh, is still installing and probably has a couple more minutes to go. Uh, so we'll probably actually do the demo in uh, backwards order. We'll do WSL2. Uh, first, and then once the WSL1 package installer is done, we'll go back and, and show Eclipse and NetBeans there. So, we're here in WSL2. Let's start with Eclipse and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's right. We didn't install Eclipse here. That's why this finished first. So, let's try NetBeans. Hopefully, in a few seconds, this will show up. Um, uh, 
There we go. Uh, that should be the splash screen. I don't know if that's actually going to render. Here we go. So, so far so good. It's loading. It loaded up the splash screen. Uh, this is the first time NetBeans is running, so it might have to run through some, you know, first time industrialization. Uh, but it looks like it's, uh, what does that say? Reading module storage. So it's it's doing its thing. It's, it's going through, initializing. I do recall NetBeans not being terribly quick to start up uh, back when I used it a, a while ago. I, I can't even remember what version that was. This is version 10. Um, it looks like it's an Apache project now. Uh, it used to be a Sun project, and then Oracle got it uh, in the acquisition. Uh, but I don't think Oracle really cared about it, so I wonder if they spun it off onto a, into an Apache project. So. So we'll let that kind of do its thing for a bit. Let's check on WSL1 and see how that's doing. Okay, so it's still installing. It's installing Eclipse right now. All right, now we're on to loading modules, starting modules. So we should be pretty close to, to having this start up. So first impressions is... Uh, It might not be the best performance if you try to use NetBeans in WSL. You might, you might actually want to run WSL. Sorry, you might actually want to run NetBeans on your Windows side, editing the files, and then build it in in WSL. I'm not exactly sure how that works. How that would work? Just kind of thinking off the top of my head. Okay, so now we're Oh, so close to the end of the install on WSL1. I have to be honest, there were some packages that got installed that I have absolutely no idea why why they were even installed. WPA supplicant, I, 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 I can't, I, I don't know if NetBeans needed that, if Eclipse needed that, but this is WSL, it's I, I, I don't know, I don't know why WPA supplicant is, is necessary, but anyway the install has finally completed and we're just about to get dropped back to our prompt. And then we'll start with Eclipse because we've already seen NetBeans on WSL2. We know that that works. So let's see what Eclipse looks like. And, uh, you know, if this take this starts to take a, a while, then, uh, I don't know, I might just go take a nap and come back when it's done. Okay, well that's quick. So Eclipse doesn't seem to like running in WSL1. Let's try NetBeans. So far it's looking better. We haven't gotten an, er an error yet. So let's see, see what we get. Hey, we've got a splash screen, and it's initializing. And if you remember from when this was running on the WSL2 side, this took a while. So we'll we'll see how long this takes. And I might I might cut this video, uh, crop crop this out, trim this out, clip this out. Ah, I forget my video editing terms. Um, all this waiting has put me to sleep. So we'll see how long this takes, and. Uh, and we'll see if NetBeans is, is any, any quicker on the WSL1 side than it was on the WSL2 side. So far it feels a little quicker. All right, so we've gotten past the splash screen, and that took, I don't know, maybe two or three minutes. Long enough to be frustrating, at the very least. Um, but it still does seem to be a little bit peppier than it did on the WSL2 side. So my, my first impressions, uh, definitely slower. 
uh, probably because you're you're running across that that translation layer. You know, you're running in a virtualized environment. Um, I don't really know. It just it seems slower than it should be. Um, and obviously, Eclipse didn't run. I don't know what was up with that. Something something it didn't like. Uh, I didn't go check that log, but it, something broke. Uh, maybe it's just a configuration issue on my end, um, but out of the box, it's not as simple as installing WSL, installing Eclipse, and then expecting it to work. Um, obviously, the, the X connection is not the issue, because X clock and NetBeans run just fine. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that uh, that gives you a good kind of peek under the covers as to how you can run um, a more sophisticated kind of bigger applications in WSL. So if you like this video, go ahead and uh, give it a thumbs up. Click that like button down below. Subscribe to the channel. Um, this was kind of a, a bit of a different video than I've done in the past. Usually they're more technical. Uh, we get into code and we write some code, or it's talking about kind of process and, and more um, you know abstract conceptual things. Uh, so go ahead and you can look through the history on the channel, and there's plenty of videos there to check out. Um, if you have any questions on this, want me to do another follow-on video, uh, or want me to do a video on any other topics, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, I do read the comments and I try to respond pretty quickly to them. You know, assuming I'm awake, I, I try to respond to them pretty quickly. Uh, again, this video was inspired by a comment on a previous video, and I'll, I'll leave that video linked down in the description below. Uh, again, be sure to subscribe, click that notification bell, and uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a, a great week, great rest of your day, and uh, happy coding.